The video you're about to watch is either sponsored by and by to funded by the viewers and features products that were either failed, provided, or bought and carefully snuck into the house under the cover of darkness. As a musician and a fan of music, I like to watch award shows like the Grammys to keep up to date with what's going on in the world of music. However, as a guitar modder and tinkerer, when I saw this, I absolutely had to question everything I knew or everything I thought I knew about modding. That bass player slash keyboard player is Annie Clements or Clem, and she's playing what she calls her bass of the future. And when I saw that, I knew that I absolutely had to have one. So in this video, I'm going to research it, I'm going to find the parts, and we are going to build it. First of all, I guess we need a bass. This will do nicely. This is my already modded classic vibe from Squire P Bass. I've already upgraded it, so I've got some Sharla tuners up there which match the nice black color of the block inlays, which are gorgeous. I have sanded the neck, so it's this nice satin finish. I have put um, quarter pounder pickups in there, so it's a bit more rocky, and I've given the electronics a complete overhaul, including a Switchcraft jack. So although it's a Squire and a fairly budget instrument, we're starting with a fantastic bass guitar. All we need to do is add the keyboard. To do that, I need to find out what keyboard Clem was using. There she is with the bass of the future, and she's going to explain to us how to build it. If you haven't seen this video, I'll link it down in the video description so you can see her explaining it, but I am gonna run through everything she does to recreate this bass of the future. So there's the keyboard, it looks very, very familiar. A little close up, lovely. So it's a small mini keys thing from IK Multimedia. Oh look, this one. Yes, I prepared for this video, so I reached out and IK sent me this, so a big thanks to IK Multimedia for sending me this to include in the video. Now we need to find out how Clem attaches it to the bass and how she uses it, because it's not actually a sound maker, it's a MIDI controller. So um, I need to find out how she uses the software, which I'm gonna guess is also IK Multimedia. I say guess, I know it is. Here she is playing it, and um, you can see that it's sort of tilted on the angle, and if I scrub through the video, we'll find out how she attaches it and how she gets the angles. It's really worth watching this actual video, by the way. Okay, there it is. So you can really see just here, there's a piece of wood which has been painted black, and there's, there's two of them, of course, one per hinge, then some door hinges and a command hook, which is made of plastic and, and screwed. Looks like it's screwed or possibly stuck onto the hinge. So all I need to do now is source the following parts. I need the bass guitar, check. The keyboard, check. I need some blocks of wood, gonna have to find those. Some hinges, some screws, some dual lock, and some command hooks or some way of uh, like not making that hinge close. And then USB cables and some software and a computer. All right. The first thing we need to do is to go out of the studio and get myself into the garage. In here is a bunch of uncategorized stuff. So I'm gonna search through here and hopefully find something that resembles what Clem is using on her base of the future. Ooh, L brackets. I found some old rusty hinges, which are the wrong way round. I need them to be long and narrow, and these are fat and short. It's no good. I can't find the right parts I need, which means we're going shopping. Successful shopping trip. I've got these hinges, which are similar to what Clem uses on her base. Her base of the future, I should say. I also bought two different sizes of L brackets to use as a spacer in between the hin hinge. Sorry, that way. So when I decide at which angle I want it, I can bend this L bracket to support that hinge to stop it closing. I found some pieces of wood just here, knocking around the garage. So those are gonna be the ones, they're just big enough, just. So I might have a little look around to see if I can find something a little bit wider. And um, I think, oh no, I also got some felt spacers, just in case anything needs a little bit more cushioning for the cushioning. I've just been up in the attic and found this hollow aluminium piece of metal, aluminum, aluminium, and um, that fits the hinge absolutely perfectly. So I'm gonna use that instead of the wood. Two pieces, cut to size, nan, I need to drill the holes through, so that's marked out already. Holes are drilled, now I'm gonna use my tap and die set to give this a thread, so I shouldn't have to put a nut on the other side. The way the tap and die works is to find this number four, 
I've thread them through like that, so we now have a thread on the inside of that hole. And now I should be able to lie that on there, those holes line up, and then take my bolt and it screws in with no need for a nut. So that means uh, I haven't got to get, nut, get a nut inside there. Here we jolly well go. Two finished items, two finished articles. So hinges on spacers, time to spray them black. We are post spraying and I think they look brilliant. So there's the aluminium block and there's the hinge on top. That's my daughter talking about vanilla ice cream. <laughs> I now understand why she's using a jazz base, or maybe one of the reasons. You've got a, a bigger body down here. But placing it roughly there will give me that. No, hang on, it's ran the wrong way. Ah, I may need to remove some pick guard screws, but putting it that way would place it about there, which for my massive hands would make it uh, a lot better. So I'm gonna try there. That's gonna be Velcroed onto the base. So I have some Velcro here and there, of course and here and here. Ideally, I'd like it here, but that's where the volume and tone knob are. So I may have to move one of these volume and or tones. And I really didn't want to have to do that. Oh, Velcro is attached. I'm going to try to put them um, just on the inside of the pick guard, on the inside of the pickup, sorry. So that um, I know that's not spread as widely as I'd like, but I really don't want to have to move either of these knobs. So um, let's try that. Okay, it's on, it's stuck. You can still, still play the G without an issue. And now I guess bottom of the keyboard and more Velcro. Nicely prepared. Now it's time to just stick this on. So final pieces of Velcro and we're done. It's on. Keyboard is attached to the base, let's give it a bit of squishing, and now I'm just gonna get that, that space, although they are, that's quite wobbly. I don't really like that. That needs some sort of modification. I don't like the Velcro on the actual base itself, it's too wobbly. That's fine, that's doing a wonderful job, but on the base, I think we're gonna have to, on the base of the base, on the scratch plate, we're gonna need to do, um, what's it called, dual lock. That is now solid as a rock. Flipping neck. Okay, that's not going anywhere. That was a good idea. I figured out how to get the keyboard at the right angle, and that is by using an old guitar pot and a multi-tool felt thing that I can glue on there, uh, just by those screws, just there. And um, that gives me the right angle. And it's, push it's uh, padded. It's here. It works, it's plugged in, it was seamless to integrate. Check it out. I could not be happier with how much fun I've just been having. I should have been recording myself, jamming myself with myself when I was setting up. So there it is. Um, let's take a quick side look. Um, amazing, not so easy to play sitting down, I must say. So this is for me, um, I'd have to do something, maybe get a right angled uh, micro USB uh, cable just there. But there's my, my setup underneath, I can, Lift it up, there we go, and um, putting it back down. I like that because it looks like I can actually do something with those knobs. Maybe I can um, mod those knobs to actually do something at some point, I don't know. It is a bit wobbly just there. I need to really make sure that Velcro is on. Let's hear it. I've got the bass plugged into the audio interface, which is running Amplitude 5 using the Bassman plugin um, that Clem was using. And for the key sounds, I'm using, what am I using? Syntronic and also uh, Modo drums and Modo bass, all from IK Multimedia. How fun is that? I mean, it, it, it might not appeal to you, but it's certainly appealing to me. I will try and sell you the concept by having fun with it. Um, let's um, have a look at this knob here, because th with this knob, I can change the sound of the synth bass. If I do that and then press it. And then you've got, you can just basically change to the different presets of Syntronic. 
then you can also of course play the bass and the keys at the same time if you can coordinate it. It's a lot harder than I thought it was going to be. That took a few attempts, if I'm honest, and I, I cut the bad bits out. You can also use it to play drums. And you can, if you're really cool, I guess you could also play bass and drums at the same time. That's going to take some practice, but you, you get the general idea. That was... Um, that was fun. I think everybody should have one of these keyboards on their instrument that isn't a keyboard. In fact, if you have a keyboard, stick another keyboard on your keyboard. This is too, too much fun. You can also use the keyboard to control a bass VST in case you get tired of playing the actual strings. This is a lot harder than I imagined it would be. I guess it's a new instrument. So, um, Clem, thanks for introducing me to yet another thing that I can't play properly. Damn it. I'm really happy with how my version of the bass of the future has turned out, but I'm going to make some future adjustments, I think. There's some things that we can improve on. Number one, I think that having the volume and tone, hang on, just, just under there, is achievable, but not ideal. So I might have to do something about that. You could even mount something on the side of the keyboard. That would be fun. <laughs> Another thing is that having these pieces of uh, aluminium there are slightly getting in the way of my picking fingers, which not, not really play that, that G string very much. But if I did want to, I'd have to make sure that I got it, hang on, in between those two, two things. So maybe, maybe something that actually doesn't require such long pieces. So this is a very, um, uh, what's the word? Basic way of adding a keyboard to your bass. And if I was going to use this more often, um, I would want something that doesn't stop me getting my fingers in there because I'm not skilled enough to, to remember that, um, that those things are there. So I'm gonna end up shoving my fingers in there at some point. Um, I'd also like to be able to maybe move it out of the way even. I don't know, I'm asking too much now, I think. So I guess that's it. That is the base of the future. A big thanks to Annie Clements, who had no part in this video at all whatsoever, apart from the fact that she inspired me and I stole her idea to have some fun with. I hope that that's okay with you, Annie, if you're watching this, and I hope that um, you guys are inspired to go and have some fun, at least. I don't think it's going to make me a better bass player. I do think I'm going to have some more enjoyment out of the bass, and I also think that I'm going to be able to make more music because from my very seat, I could play the drums and then record the bass without having to get up, and that's quite nice as a part-time lazy person. If you'd like to know all the stuff that I used in this video, like the plugins, the guitar, and the keyboard, there are links in the video description. Also, I'd like to know what you think of this. It is just a keyboard glued to a bass, but for some reason it's got some magic in it. But maybe that's only when Clem plays it. I don't know. Let me know in the comments section down below. And as I've said comment section, that means it's the end of the video, which means you've made it to the end of the video and you are in the end of the video club to prove that you are a member of this prestigious elite. When you do leave your comment down below, please include the phrase, slap a de bass. <laughs> How could I not? Thanks so much for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please give me a thumbs up. And if you want to do any other stuff to help build the channel, that would also be great. I've really enjoyed making this base of the future. I will see you possibly in one of those videos over there or, or in the future at some point with the base of the future. Have a great time and um, be good to each other. I'll see you soon. Bye.